This coolant right here can drop your CPU and GPU temps by seven degrees Celsius. Or it's a scam. I actually don't know yet. The people at GoChiller claim that they have a graphene nanoparticle suspension that is 60% more thermally conductive than just normal everyday water. So we're gonna test it out. Just like I'm gonna test out the segue to our sponsor. Thanks to our sponsor, Volta. Volta's new Giga Charger can charge four devices simultaneously, offering either 130 watt or 200 watt fast charging, depending on which model you get. Check it out today at the link below. Graphene was first discovered in 2004, and ever since then it's been theorized to be able to do basically everything. Well, except leave the laboratory. But for real though, it's a fascinating material and it uh, kind of smells like liquor and permanent markers. <laughs> graphene is basically just graphite, but instead of having a 3D crystal structure, it's two dimensional, meaning it creates one atom thick sheets of carbon atoms in a hexagonal orientation. These bonds are incredibly strong. Graphene is about 200 times stronger than steel. But this arrangement also means atoms delocalize their electrons, meaning they can move around more freely. These loosey-goosey electrons is why graphene is such an incredible electrical and thermal conductor. It's actually the most conductive material currently in existence. So just how conductive? Well, uh, we have sheets of graphene right here. And it has a thermal conductivity of 1950 watts per meter Kelvin. That is 20 times more than liquid metal. So to show you just how thermally conductive these graphene sheets are, I've got a little strip right here. And if I put it down onto an ice cube, I can slice into it like butter using the heat of my hands. It feels like I'm touching an ice cube right now. It's, it's so weird. Can you see it on the thermal camera, Andy? Yeah, it's, it's so strange, but these sheets have a problem. Because of the one atom thickness, the thermal conductivity is just one directional. So like this direction, this direction, really, really good. This way though, through those different sheets, super bad. So why exactly should this stuff work for cooling your PC? Wouldn't having a bunch of graphite clogging up your micro fins be a bit of a problem? Well, maybe, I guess we're gonna find out if that is an issue. But the basic principle is that you have a whole bunch of very, very small, very highly conductive bits suspended in the liquid. And so it's kind of like the water goes over the hot bits and the graphene rapidly, you know, thermally conducts in, which it then disperses back to the water as it's traveling between your hot bit and the radiator. Once you get to the radiator, it very rapidly dumps all of its heat and cools down the water around it as it's going back to the CPU. I guess it's about time that we just empty this out and see if it actually works, right? Yeah. We're gonna empty this guy out. It has EK's cryofuel in it. So that's essentially just water with additives to prevent like moss growing inside of it and stuff. So I think it's a pretty good comparison. Oh, that's heavy. <laughs> what do you think the chances are, Brandon, of me leaving today with my clothing unstained by either graphite or red dye. Two out of 10. Two out of 10, ooh. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty accurate. <laughs> Fortunately, EK has an easy drain port. So, you know, draining and filling the system should in theory be pretty simple. Oh geez, that's not how that was supposed to go. Oh dear. I kind of do need help. Andy! Nope, we're, we're fine, we're fine. We're doing fine, Brandon. What, 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 what have you done? <laughs> It does smell bad. I just thought of a technology that we can use. There we go. It looks like below the drain port, they have a little spot that allows the water to get into the chassis instead of out of the chassis. I would say mostly that's my fault, but I thought it would work a bit better. As I was saying, because we have a fill port and a drain port. This is going to be exceptionally easy to blow up. <laughs> Maybe we just need several people to blow on it. So keep on holding it there, I'm gonna blow. Okay. 
Is it working at all? <laughs> it came, a little bit came out. I'm sure, I don't know how to make this. Yeah. It's a specialty of mine. <laughs> so in conclusion, the EK Fluid Gaming, which I said was very easy to drain and to short circuit about it, is not. It's very difficult. <laughs> now our graphene coolant should be a lot more thermally conductive, but graphene's also the most electrically conductive material in existence. So that's not ideal for your computer. I wanna see what the resistance actually is. So across this distance right here, this is distilled water. So it seems to be somewhere around, I believe 10 mega ohms is what it's reading. Come over here to EK's cryo fuel, two, three-ish, something like that. So EK's cryo fuel is actually a lot more conductive than just distilled water. And we come over to our graphene solution. It's about the same as EK's cryo fuel. I don't know how much I trust these numbers. I'm gonna call in the engineers. <laughs> So yeah, this is exactly what it was doing before. It, that's, that's it started in the same spot. Yeah, so, well, this is cryofuel. They probably are creating a coating. Creating a coating? Oh, yeah, that would make corrosion. sense. Yes, okay. So as it naturally sits for longer, it'll build up a coating. So it seems like in our distilled water, we put the leads in and the resistance stays about the same. Whereas when we put it in our cryofuel or a graphene solution, it starts going up pretty fast. And we're guessing that's because of the corrosion inhibitors in here are slowly coating the leads and increasing the resistance between them. So that's cool, I just learned something. <laughs> now, another thing that Go Chiller said is really great about their stuff is it's anti-foaming agents. So foam is just terrible for your PC parts because little bubbles and stuff can form on the micro fins in your CPU or in your pump and like if it gets out of hand in the pump, it can run dry and kill itself. Or it can be less intense, but just like little bubbles appearing in your micro fins and lowering the efficiency of your whole loop. So I'm interested to check it out. I have my highly technical, you know, little agitator here. Normally Linus is good, but he's on vacation, unfortunately. Now I tried paint brushes, no good, don't agitate enough. Tried this right here, terrible result probably see the security footage of that right now. Oh, this guy right here is pretty good. So if we take a look, there's a lot of bubbles forming right now. I'm not entirely sure that we can overcome that with the graphene solution, but if we can, I'll be impressed. Oh. Now, if I had to guess, this will be pretty much the same as the water. Oh, actually it's foaming a little bit. You can kind of see on the top there, we're getting these bubbles that are forming, which we weren't really getting with the distilled water. So that sort of stuff happens in your loop and it's gonna be not a great time. I'm curious to see if it'll behave any differently in our graphene solution. It's gonna be a bit hard to tell exactly what's going on given it's black, but let's give her a go. It's, it almost seems like it's foaming a bit more. Um, we're getting a lot of little bubbles kind of all over the place. I would say that was worse. So that's not a pass. <laughs> yeah, it's like five minutes later and there still are a couple bubbles in this one, nothing at all in the cryofuel. So I think their, uh, their anti-foaming agent isn't too good, but let's chuck her in. I'm actually excited. I think this is gonna look friggin' sweet. That's why I wanted to use this computer instead of another one. Like we could have just built a test bench Oh, geez. Have you watched Full Metal Alchemist? This reminds me of the thing that was bad. <laughs> I don't remember what it's called. This is freaky. It's like how, it's <laughs> and like the consistency just isn't quite right. Like a witch's beast. Yeah, oh. Oh, oh, oh yeah, that's a bad omen. <laughs> yeah, I've been marked. I'm going to be graphing possessed. I don't know. I don't even know what, it, like it's shimmering. It looks like it's alive. It's really odd. It actually looks like it's infecting the computer. Okay, Brandon, can you give us some slow-mo? I feel like this is going to be the strangest looking pump pull ever.
We're just here in the BIOS. I need to change all the fans back to be full speed. This seriously looks so freaking cool. Like I've seen black liquid in computers before, but there's like somewhere between like a texture and just the void in this. That is so sick. I can't get over it. So to test this out, we're just doing the two big dirties. So Firmark and Prime95 run them both at the same time. About as brutal as you can be for a computer. So just need to record the temperature, 22.4 degrees. So that is slightly higher than it was before. And then wait half an hour and find out how we did. <laughs> All right, we're back half an hour later. Temperature's gone down in the room actually a little bit, but the temperature has certainly gone up in the PC. It looks like we're gonna have to refer to the graphs here. Yeah, sorry, uh, it looks like it did nearly nothing. <laughs> Frig. It looks like in some spots, it was maybe two degrees lower and the room was also a degree hotter when we ran this. So maybe a max of three degrees difference, but that's well within the margin of error. Well, I wasn't happy with our test results. We were within what, like one, two degrees and our test setup was not able to resolve that. So here we go, different test setup. We're in Linus's office where we have control of the HVAC. We have a different motherboard that the VRMs will not throttle on. The CPU is pegged at five gigahertz, all cores. Voltage is locked at 1.4. And this is gonna be an actually good test. So we've got distilled water in here. We're gonna run this for half an hour, come back, chuck the graphene in there, and with any luck, it's cooler. And we'll know for sure if it works. <laughs> I've run this twice now with the distilled water, and we've gotten 76 degrees max both times, and the temperature in this room is quite consistent. We're also seeing 200 watts sustained for the whole half an hour on the CPU. So I'm pretty happy with this. Let's flare up with graphene. Whoa. Heck yeah. Oh, it's so warm. Feels nice. Mm -hmm. Jeez, Brandon, why did we not do this in the first place? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you are no longer needed. Thank you. Thank you for your assistance. Yeah, that was super easy. <laughs> oh, we're seeing it again. Like the distilled water wasn't doing anything weird, but this is foaming at the top. Like their anti-foaming agent sucks. <laughs> all right, this one's for all the marbles. 0.1 of a degree hotter than at the start of the last test. Very happy with that. This test is actually good, so no excuses this time. <laughs> so it's been half an hour and it does look like that we are one degree cooler on our CPU with this test setup. Problem is, we're also one degree cooler in the room. So yeah, let's take a look at the logs, but it's not looking great. <laughs> huh, this might've actually done something. It's only one or two degrees difference. At first it was even more, but it is enough. Like if you look at this graph, like just, I think it might've actually done something, Brandon. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's shocking, honestly. Let's see here. Let's go like individual core and see what they'd, here's core four. Same thing, it is noticeably lower. And let's change just for fun to our other water file since I ran that twice. It's exactly the same, it is lower. Well, yeah, I'm pretty glad that I redid our testing because this does show an improvement. It's not massive, but like three, four degrees is measurable in our test setup that we have here. So it does do something. It's not complete snake oil and it looks really friggin' cool. Like it's legitimately the coolest looking coolant I've ever seen. So yeah, I like it. I want some more. Go chiller, send us some. Mostly because it looks sick, but it doesn't hurt your performance and maybe improves it. So like, awesome. And you know what's also awesome? This segue to our sponsor, Micro Center. <laughs> Thanks to Micro Center for sponsoring this video. Get the best prices and best selection at any of one of Micro Center's 25 locations across the United States. Use the Micro Center Custom PC Builder to spec out the best PC at any price point. Once you're done in the PC Builder, add your computer and setup to the Micro Center Custom Builds Showcase. This is a great place for people to gather and discuss each other's builds and get inspiration for the next PC. Check them out at the link in the video description. New customers can receive a free 240 gigabyte SSD, no purchase necessary. Well, if you guys like this video, then consider getting subscribed and maybe check out this video where me and Linus build a small form factor PC and it's really difficult. Bye.